catch you, babe. Hi, you've joined me, Chris Franco, in my one-on-one -on -one interview with, as my father would say, el multifacetico Tony Blana. He's the founder and executive artist and direct, artistic director of the East L.A. Classic Theater. And what we're going to do is we're going to run some footage of your Zoot Suit Pachuco version of Romeo and Juliet while you tell us a little bit about what you ate to come up with this fantastic concept, which is a um, 40 Zoot Suit adaptation right there. Well, you know, I was in Zoot Suit. So was I. In 1978, uh, which dates us. But anyway, um, I, that, I'm a classically trained actor, and for many years, um, I trained in the classics. I went to Royal Academy in London and um, came back and uh, found that there was very little employment for Latinos in the classics in general mainstream American theater. And so I wanted to create a situation where um, Latino actors or actors of color who had this training in the classics and they come out of drama schools mm -hmm. every single year and have nowhere to go to with that it. training to come and, and do it in Los Angeles, and which they all end up at anyway and to do it for a specific audience, which I think is the most important audience on the planet, which is a young, underserved, you know, mm -hmm. um, inner city audience. Talent, yeah. Um, now, this is what spun off. East LA Classic Theater is what spun off into Beyond Borders. Which yeah, is, we, uh, if you could explain that well, to we us. Well, we developed, we studied uh, exposure programs, which is when, when plays go to schools. And we found them sorely lacking, and we developed a very comprehensive program where we actually prep the kids, we perform for the kids, we interact with them, and then we ask them, we do a pro we process it mm. with them. And this is for at-risk youth, insofar as educationally yes. kids. Yeah, that, usually that like Title I, reading. Title One schools, schools right. that are that are you know uh, underserved and, and low performing, and I I, I wanted <clears throat> I wanted to use uh, the performing arts as a literacy tool because usually performing arts are dismissed are, as entertainment. So sure. It's just something that the kids have fun with. Yeah. You know, and I don't we're agree with that. We're going to put on a show for you. You have the kids put on a show for themselves. Yeah, right? well, there's two different things. One is when the, the uh, uh, professional actors go in and perform in the schools and interact with the kids over a three-day period. And then there's a, a longer 16-week residency where we interact with, uh, collaborate with language arts teachers, and we get the kids to learn how to act and write their own plays about their lives. Fantastic. And, and, and it's amazing the work that comes from kids in so far as oh. their experience and their lives. Not only that, but What's I some think... some of the plays that they've come up with? Well, th there's, a, there's one play, for example, it was an immigrant kid who come up, came up with a play about the Holocaust and about uh, Jews running oh, away goodness. from the Nazis, okay? There was a, a kid who came up with a Zoot Suit play uh, about uh, dealing with conflict and territorial com competition, you know, and resolving and so, it uh, amicably. And I know... I was that type of kid. I Teenage mean, I pregnancy, I mean, all kinds of things. I wasn't that type of kid. <laughs> um, there are some people that are book learning people, but I always learned better when I was actively living what I was participating in. And this is a way to get students who otherwise wouldn't get hip to books and wouldn't get hip to reading because... Well, you know, the, the, the desks are d removed. And they're forced to, you know, you know, gently, but they're forced mm -hmm. to deal with themselves, their realities, and expressing that reality. And as a result, you get more uh, participation in class. You get mm -hmm. more um, attendance. I want to yeah. make sure that we, Juwan, that we run the number where they can get a hold uh, uh -huh. through the East LA Classic Theater. They can get a hold of the Beyond Borders program. And what age, grades? Middle school. With? It's Middle right school, there, guys. High school. They can call 323-981-1710. That's our office. And they can request to find information because b schools can buy this through the different titles that are granted to them, correct? Yes, well, the, we, uh, we just got a uh, Title VII grant because we've used it for bilingual education, which is unusual. Yeah. You know, and, and the performing arts is helping these bilingual kids not only uh, facilitate transition into English, but also accelerate it. I mean, some of the, the teachers have said that they've made progress in a couple of months that would have taken them six to eight months to achieve, if at all. Fantastic. You know. Anyway, I know that is what makes you an L.A. legend, the fact <laughs> that you're doing this, Tony. I want to thank you so much. Yeah, We're nearing the end. I want to talk a, lot, a little bit about your latest film that just sh aired on Showtime. It's called The Princess and the Barrio Boy. Well, it's my first... And some of the kids from Resurrection are in it, as well as El yeah. Eddie Olmos and uh, Maria Conchita Longo. It's my directorial debut. And, your uh, debut? De my debut. And, uh, and I, I co-directed Mili to Juan with Paul Rodriguez, but this is my Very first, funny. Very fun you show. told me this is based on The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. In what way? Well, uh, she, she's a swimmer. She's a swimmer. She's a swimmer. Okay. And we took a lot of the um, elements of the movie from the original fairy tale. Uh, she doesn't have a mother. Her mother has died. 
the father is, is single, the father is, we changed a little bit, but he's considering marriage with a, a, a questionable and uh, motherly candidate. And the father is Eddie Olmos, and that's what we're going to say goodbye with. Uh, we're going to see a clip from The Princess and the Barrio yes, and it's and what I love about it is that it's, it's a rich Latina girl, which is rarely seen on television or film. And there are a lot of those. Yes, there are. Mexican-American princesses. Successful maps. Exactly. maps. They're out and, there. Uh, I dated a few. They're not the kind you read. No, no, no. They they're, read they're you. the kind you pay for. They read you the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then her relationship Let's with, see the, the with clip the, if uh, we can. poor kid from uh, East L.A. Thank you for joining us. My best friend. Who's that? The Cholo boy. The kid from East L.A. East L.A.? And the only reason I was talking to him was because you were so late picking me up. Oh, I'm sorry, Serena. I was taking care of little Joseph here, and I... Lost track of time. <laughs> you know, Sirena, I mean, you may not be right, but people are going to judge you by the company that you keep. Yeah, well, judge yourself, Dad. That's enough. That's it. You do eat. I can't. Yes, you can eat. It tastes bad. You know what, darling? Maybe we should keep Luisa just as a housekeeper, and then we hire some new staff. Someone who is more familiar with European cuisine. You know, Luisa is part of this family. That next thing you know, she's gonna want to get rid of the cat. Yeah, maybe she already did. <laughs> That's enough, right? <laughs> Tony, we got just a couple of seconds. Thank you so much oh, for joining my us. Thank you. You're a very talented man who is generous with his talents. Thank you for everything you've done for the community. Remember, you guys, Beyond Borders, uh, East LA Classic Theater. Mm -hmm. Tony Plana, thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you, you know, so much. I've, I've gotten more out of the community work. Uh, than I've ever done. It gives back. To, to yeah, well. <laughs> Telecu has built its reputation in the community on a foundation of service, empowerment, advancement, and the creation of self-sufficiency, achieving multifaceted growth through innovation and collaboration. And we really believe that the greatest social good that you do for an individual is the creation of a full-time job so that uh, he or she may clothe, feed, and educate their own families. Telecu, a pioneering institution for the ages. ¿Qué podría usted comprar con 12.50? 35 millones de personas lo invierten en una membresía con AARP. Y con esos 12.50 al año, obtienen acceso a descuentos y muchos beneficios, como servicios legales y financieros, oportunidades para trabajar como voluntario y asistencia gratis en la preparación de sus impuestos. Llame, infórmese, hágase miembro y recibirá gratis un ejemplar de Segunda Juventud.